A flood of new blaster leaks from Nerf, Dart Zone, and X-Shot. Goofy new blasters from a little known company. And the hobby celebrates its history with exciting new products. I'm Grim. I'm Vile Mods. And I'm KT of Family Foam Sport. We are your hosts, all that and more in the first Foam News Collective episode of 2024. We're back from our break and we have a lot of catching up to do, so please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get right into the news. Back in episode 18, we talked about nerf leaks from Chicken Master 99 that covered two new rival blasters, the Challenger and the Mirage. We now have listings on Entertainment Earth suggesting a possible February release with rendered images of the Challenger, a strifoid flywheeler sporting some really interesting features. While this render has spurred accusations of being AI generated, we have confirmation from a source at Hasbro that this was created by a designer who was unfortunately let go in Hasbro's recent layoffs. The designer left us with something new for Rival with a new 12 round curved mag, which is definitely distinct from the traditional mags in the Rival line. But strangely, the blaster comes with 18 AccuRounds. The render also shows us what looks like an N-Strike barrel lug geometry, which is also new for Rival. Not shown in the rendered image, but stated in the description, is a spring-loaded carabiner that's included, making use of all the attachment points on the blaster to help piece together your loadout. The Mirage, unfortunately, doesn't have an image for us to gawk at, but the description clarifies that it will be a slide-primed mag-fed springer with an 8-round mag, which can be breech-loaded, similar to the ones included with the rival finisher, and 10 AccuRounds. The Fast Shots Alien Gen line, first spotted at Toy Fair 2023, has received an official announcement, and wow, do they look like goofy fun. The line currently consists of four blasters, the Alien Angler, a rear pull four shot blaster with a vertical configuration, Tactical Tentacles, a top slide rotating cylinder blaster, Larva Strike, which looks a lot like a micro shot, and the Sonic Flytrap, a pump action single shot blaster that looks like it could be break action, but is pictured with a dart in the barrel at the tip. No further information is available yet, including whether the Angler's four barrels contain a smart AR or if the tentacle cylinder rotates, nor do we have pricing or availability. Check the link to Happy Line's Instagram post and the brand portfolio on their website down in the description. Looks like it's time for our dose of target leaks by none other than Chicken Master 99, so let's get right into it. Starting off with Nerf's in-series nomenclature, we have a $20 pinpoint blaster, the $5 Ward Blaster, possibly a new Jolt variant. The $30 Shadow Storm Blaster, putting it in similar price range of the Storm Charge. A $25 Gear Up Pack, which could be similar to their old Tactical Vest or Accessory Packs. And finally, a new $60 Pro Blaster. Moving right along to Dart Zone Covert Ops, we have a two-pack of their existing Storm Squad 4-Shot Blaster for $10. Or for the same price, we have the Renegade Double Barrel Blaster, about which we know nothing. The $30 Bulldog Tripod Belt Blaster sounds like a competitor to the X-Shot Insanity Rage Fire, but at this price point from Dart Zone is less likely to be a flywheeler. And finally from Dart Zone, we're getting a new Max Striker 2.0 at $50, keeping with Dart Zone's theme of reworking their older Pro Blasters and raising the question of a Nexus Pro reboot for the Adventure Force brand. Maybe. To finish it off, we have a couple entries from X-Shot, starting with the $8 Blaster Corn Heartbreaker and the $15 Horror Fire Doomsday. Other than extremely crazy names, both blasters say they include 16 darts. Back in early December, the big three retailers in the US, Amazon, Walmart, and Target all pulled gel bead products marketed towards children from their physical and virtual shelves. This decision was based on concerns raised by the Consumer Product Safety Commission who have tracked around 7,800 hospital visits related to mishaps with water beads being swallowed, inhaled, put in ears and noses where their hyperabsorbent properties can cause urgent health problems. 
This CPSC report was spurred by an infant death in July of 2023, followed by a class action lawsuit against Orbeez in October, as well as November legislation attempting to ban water beads from being sold as toys. Additionally, both the CPSC and Consumer Reports have revealed through testing that some gel beads contain likely carcinogen and neurotoxin acrylamide, as well as BPA, challenging the common non-toxic labeling used on those products. You may remember gel beads from our recent recent piece on patent disagreements between Hasbro and others where they were used as part of a failed argument suggesting that gel beads already existed and so did blasters, so gel blasters aren't new. While the gel balls used in blasters now are functionally indistinguishable from those in gel bead products, they are marketed for the 14 plus age group. According to Consumer Reports, additional companies have followed Amazon's example, including Etsy, Alibaba, Michaels, Joann, Kohl's, and Stein. A few of these companies, such as Kohl's, have decided to remove all gel ball products from sale regardless of target age, and as of this writing, that appears to include Nerf gel fire products, which are no longer available on Kohl's.com. Other retailers, including Wish and Hobby Lobby, have declined to remove any gel products from their offerings until they are legally required to do so. Nerf Action Experience Singapore has shut its doors permanently as of December 31st to close off 2023. In an early December social media post, they gave their final day notice and stated that they would be rolling out the action experience globally, starting with New Jersey, North America in spring of 2024. Looking back, there's no doubt that this location has had its troubles since it opened up in September of 2019, just before a well-known global shutdown. Before that, however, well-known Nerf enthusiast Piggy was able to check out the action experience and give us descriptions of this indoor amusement park with tons of attractions like shooting, sports activities like basketball hoops, soccer goals, multi-story obstacle courses, and reaction-based button tapping courses, just to name a few. While it's sad to see the Singapore location closing its doors, it sounds like the rest of us around the globe will be able to have our own action experience in the coming years. Just before Christmas of 2023, Nerf parent company Hasbro initiated layoffs of roughly 1,100 employees, a global workforce reduction of around 20%. While some of these employees received immediate notice, others are expected to be trickled out over the next six to eight months, according to various sources, including public and private confirmation of layoffs at Wizards of the Coast, as well as in the Nerf division. This move follows a previous round of layoffs in February of last year that saw 800 to 1,000 employees let go, and a year of consistent quarterly losses for the company, which is currently operating under a Blueprint 2.0 restructuring plan that attempts to refocus resources on specific larger in-house brands such as Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. On our Discord, Axel Sorax found a post by McFarlane Toys announcing a new licensing deal with Hasbro, making action figures of a variety of Hasbro properties in their Page Punchers line, suggesting that these layoffs may be the beginning of a plan to license out their properties rather than designing and manufacturing them in-house. And now for half lengths in the name brand category. Out of Darts is offering an exclusive orange version of the Worker Seagull. It's available on their website for the same $125 USD price as all the other colors. Discord user Fluff spotted the Captain America reskin of the Zombie Strike Side Strike on shelves at a GameStop in Ontario, Canada. The Side Strike is packaged similarly to other ink line blasters, includes a printed holster, and is selling for 23 Canadian dollars or around $17 USD. Fluff also spotted an Adventure Force packaged Busby Pixelator in a Canadian Walmart. This is the first time this blocky blaster has been spotted outside of Dollar General, who exclusively distribute many Busby blasters in the United States. Nerf's Pro AccuStrike mags and Nerf Pro AccuStrike half-length darts are now available on Amazon. 120 darts for $18 and a very reasonable two magazines for $10. Although the magazines are not universally compatible with all Talon-fed blasters, they are easily modified and might still be a worthwhile deal. The Nerf Pro Gel Fire Igniter has also started appearing for sale on Amazon along with a new 10,000 round gel fire refill pack that comes with a reusable hydration squeeze pouch. Either will set you back $10 USD. Dart Zone's Adventure Force Waffle Darts have started rolling out in new packaging that is already being spotted on Walmart shelves around the country. We've seen this packaging once before in Drax's video on Dart Zone's upcoming Chalk Darts, where they were used to hold the darts upright for refilling. 
Although they've been available for a while, AGM Master Tech's transforming soda can blasters were brought to our attention by Tag, aka that old Nerf guy, available for $20 each on Amazon. Discord user Black Francis actually has all three and provided chrono numbers in the low 40s as well as close-ups of the provided targets. After months of development and teaser posts, the Dr. Flux Gambit is now available via Out of Darts. The Gambit is a 3D printed break action shell-fed blaster powered by 40 max cartridges with Old Fusion Design's various printed shells. As such, the Gambit can fire a wide variety of ammo types, including Elite, Mega, Hyper, and Mega XL in various quantities. While some have been quick to compare the Gambit to Adrian's functionally similar Mayday Mark II, the Gambit was designed from the ground up by Flux's team based on the Fortnite Flare. It uses metal springs for the trigger and hammer rather than the Mayday's elastic cord, and the brake action is designed to be closed with a wrist flick, as confirmed by Perry and Luke from Out of Darts over on our Discord. The Gambit is available as a 3D printed parts and hardware kit for home assembly at outofdarts.com for $65 USD, along with officially licensed Old Fusion Designs 40 Max shells and canisters. If you're a huge fan of vintage blasters like the famous 1995 crossbow and would love to have that old cool flair of mods from years gone by, then Legacy Blaster Studios got you covered. Dropping on January 12th over on his website are full crossbow internals kits using older methods to make a vintage powerhouse blaster capable of hitting between 210 to 240 FPS. This kit includes a slew of machined polycarbonate parts, shell reinforcements, aluminum plunger head with skirt seal and K26 spring. Currently, there are only 10 kits available at release, but not to worry since more will be on the way. If you're one of the few to snag this kit, be sure to check out Legacy Blaster Studios YouTube channel for the installation guide and purchase links down below. The crossbow isn't the only way to harken back to an earlier time. Mostly Harmless Arms, who most recently gave us the Frag Ball, is offering a small quantity of rebuilds of the classic Rainbow Pump, originally by Ryan McNumbers Credderfield, who sadly passed away in 2022. These are closely based on the original 2011 blaster and built largely with classic parts and tools, only replacing certain wooden or unavailable parts with 3D printed designs. The Rainbow Pump, source of the original Rainbow Catch, is an important piece of history, but with a hopper and roughly 200 FPS performance, it's still a competitive option on most fields. Be sure to check out Mostly Harmless Arms Etsy page as well as the Reddit link with more information about McNumbers down below. Tinkershot of Spitfire Products has released the Javelin Pulse Rifle with so many features, it's hard to know where to even start first. An evolution of the Coat Hanger and 557 mock-up, this blaster came in three configurations to take it from HVZ level all the way into the 300 FPS ranges. An additional fourth configuration is available by special request to take it to 320 and beyond. Once you've chosen your barrel and plunger tube configuration, you get the features that really make this blaster special, such as the dual linear bearing slide prime, reversible cheek rest for you lefties, onboard tool storage in the grip, and even three inches of spring adjustment built directly into the blaster to literally dial in your FPS perfectly. Dinkershot has also stated that it's so good, he's hoping to maybe get it injection molded at some point in the future. But for now, if you'd like to grab one of these tank busters for yourself, be sure to check the Etsy links down in the description. Hockey007, who many know as a mod on Walcom's Discord, has announced the return of his resin cast parts, this time in a set of replacement bits for the Nerf Strife. These parts are beautiful, have super resilient characteristics, come in a ton of colors, and the translucent colors work great with LEDs. Although you can't buy them quite yet, Hockey says the website is almost ready, and you should keep an eye on his and Walcom's YouTube channels for the link when they become available. They will cost 60 USD a set. In a collaboration between Phantom Tech and Shanye, their new pocket-sized little hamster blaster will be releasing in late February on phantomtechs.au site. This injection molded blaster with its metal plunger tube and barrel can hit up into the 120 FPS range, according to their Facebook post, and will be initially releasing in three different colorways, purple and green, white and blue, and as well as the fan favorite, clear color. 
We reached out to James of Phantom Tech to ask about distribution for these pinty offerings besides their own website, and we're told that multiple vendors will be carrying it, including Monkey Mods, Out of Darts, Blaster Tech, as well as Blaster Time, and has also stated that the price, once it hits these vendors, has yet to be announced. Bruce Leedle 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 Lee has brought us yet another fun band powered creation, the itty bitty one STM-8 break action pistol. Sporting about 70 feet per second performance and folding down about as small as the Dart Zone Solo, the one STM-8 is a super easy and quick build, great for a first printed blaster project or to give as a gift. The files are currently available for purchase on Etsy. Notably, the original listing was taken down, likely automatically for purported violations of Etsy's weapons guidelines, but the current listing is still standing. If it is removed once again, Bruce will be moving the design to printables and we will be sure to update the link down in the description. The one with the X shot long shot hit the scene. The modding community didn't waste any time creating a slew of parts for the blaster once they got it in hand. To add to that growing list of custom parts, we now have a new pump grip over on printables by Benito that contours nicely around the blaster's trigger guard, making a really nice silhouette for those that like horizontal pumps. If you're looking for mod or replacement parts, then performance mods on Etsy might have something you need with their long shot mod kit that features STL files for replacement, reinforced turnaround, reinforced pusher, new trigger, different mag releases, switch deletes, plunger tube cutting guide, and even a tool to help remove the small O-ring in the turnaround. Replacement and mod parts are also sold in separate bundles if you don't need the full overhaul kit. Links to both creators' parts will be down in the description. The Singapore Lynx, nicknamed the Slinx, is a modified version of the Orion Blaster's Lynx created by Sean, aka Kimchi. While still a 3D printed bullpup half dart springer like the Lynx, the Slink sports a modified plunger head and spring rest along with a slightly extended plunger tube with 130cc volume. These changes allow it to run weaker springs yet achieve the same power as a normal Lynx, or even reach up to and over 300 FPS with a very light prime. According to a glowing review by Bradley Phillips, Kimchi is unsure if he'll offer fully built blasters or license the design to other builders, but for now, the files are free to download on printables so you can build your own. And now for hobby halflings. XYL has released an updated threaded dart breech and 29 centimeter barrel to customize performance of the unicorns even further. Perry from Out of Darts has confirmed that this barrel does fit on the worker seagull, but the worker barrels don't fit the unicorn's breech or front muzzle. Worker now has two 3D printed angle rail risers available that are marketed for the seagull and harrier, but should work on any standard Picatinny rail. SFI is now carrying Fidlock holster hardware in both medium and large sizes for your loadout needs, and is also offering the Essentials Multifunctional Tool or EMT 31 piece toolkit with their own laser engraved logo and even offer you the option to get your own custom text for an added fee. Domochevsky's released his X-Shot Micro Reskin number no. five STL files over on his Genco Megaworks Etsy shop, now doubling up the plunger tubes compared to the number no. four hammer primed reskin for double hammer action. Radioactive's Designs has released a slurry of new STL file set barrel options on his Etsy page for the recent Nerf Zombie Driller, now converting it up to eight rounds, 14 round inline clip, or five shot ultra. Detroit Dartworks and Talonax Armory are collaborating on a new blaster called the Gin. Based on Old Fusion Designs, Flycore Geometry, and Team CARP's Bilnir. The intent is to lower the barrier of entry to the world of brushless blasters, hitting a variety of FPS numbers up to and beyond 150 FPS. The Gin is still in early closed alpha but the team says a public beta is fairly close. Bobo Innovation has released the Le Blaster 1942 on his Etsy and Cult 3D Pages, a fully functional replica blaster that works exactly like the authentic World War II weapon it was based off of. This printed blaster is such a perfect replica that you can even refer to the original user manual to learn how to operate it. Misplace Moose is now carrying the Moose 2 hardware kit on moosemodshop.com for beta testing. The beta is now open and the hardware listing has links directly to Moose's Google Drive to download all the files. 
The Frayer, a pump action five shot half dart RSCB blaster with elements borrowed from the Typhoon and Red Herring is also up for beta testers. If you'd like to get into the beta, then you can reach out to the creator, the Pixelated Cat on Discord. The World Foam Alliance website has officially launched. Their goal is to provide a place for players to connect with clubs, find games, and provide support for one another. Be sure to register at the website below to help grow the community and even find information on starting your own club if you find you have enough players in your area. If you've already registered on their website, then you should be receiving an email for login information very soon. 2023 saw a trend of folks leaving the hobby and the content creation space, but I'm happy to start off 2024 with the return of a legend. Having been resettled in the US, Captain Slug has officially reopened his Etsy shop. Although he's been back and involved in the hobby for a number of months now and only intends to sell hardware kits going forward, it's wonderful to have an established business presence from this venerable blaster designer once again. Welcome back, Slug. And now for a few quick but exciting updates on events we've already covered. When the Maryland Mayhem team opened up sponsorship signups, all the top tier slots were filled within an impressive 24 hours, but there are plenty of other slots available, so be sure to check it out if you want to show your support. Maryland Foam tournament team signups also filled up within a day, proving that there is a high demand for competitive opportunities in our growing sport. Pennsylvania Survival Fest theme announcement really snuck up on us, but the official video is finally out and it may surprise you, so be sure to give it a watch. Survival Fest 2024 will be from May 31st to June 2nd at Penn State. Keep an eye out for more details from the team on their website and social media. Endwar has also teased their theme for 2024 with cryptic missives from the Seekong Apex River. While they've remained intentionally vague, the choice of Guns N' Roses' classic hit Welcome to the Jungle gives us a pretty clear idea of where this theme is headed. So dust off your pith helmets and sharpen your machetes. As we enter yet another new era of the Foam News Collective, we have decided to retire the mod spotlight as we know it. But fear not, it will be replaced with a new segment, a yet to be named creator spotlight that widens the scope of the work we might feature, not just to mods, but to videos, design remixes, game types, websites, podcasts, anything new in the hobby space that we think is awesome, but not getting enough exposure in the hobby. Details are still being worked out, but watch this space for more developments. To cap it off though, I'm excited to present the final mod spotlight. We had some great submissions in the Discord, a My Chemical Romance themed integration by Grim Reaper 2458, a one-off 3D printed select fire flywheeler by Space called Alpencaw, I think, and a beautiful blue HPA semi-auto long shot by Cancer Upon Cancer. All former winners of the spotlight and all fabulous work. You have to get down now. But if I'm selecting the final mod spotlight, there's only one blaster I can actually select. And it is this, a custom flywheel integration presented to me by my friend Grim Reaper 2458 with parts from a Modulus, the scope from an Ultra Amp, the top rail from a Maverick, and the stock from a Raptor Strike that originally came from me, this beast is presented in Bi Pride Flag colors with the Foam Blast sticker to match. Running Fang revamps and limited edition Endwar 2022 Cyclone wheels, it hits solid numbers on a 2S LiPo. If that isn't enough, the detailing, the exposed rainbow wiring, lighting, voltmeter, the matching magazines, and most strikingly, the fact that it's personalized for me make this an absolute winner in every way. In the notes they included with this blaster, they make it clear that they went through a heck of a lot of trials and tribulations getting it up and running. So let this be a reminder that the most important part of any mod project is the personality you put into it, the love that shows in the finished product and the stories it can tell. While this blaster remains unnamed for now, I'll be following Captain Xavier's rules for naming a blaster. Keep an eye out in the future for some gameplay footage over on my Family Foam Sport channel, and once it's been proven in battle, we'll be giving it a worthy moniker. Thank you endlessly, Grim, and congratulations on being the most frequent returning champion of the mod spotlight. It's well earned. Whew, that was a lot of news. Thank you so much for watching our 25th episode. You may have noticed Grimm's absence this time around. He's still part of the show, but due to some technical difficulties, is unable to record for the time being. 
But fear not, we have some exciting surprises coming up soon. So be sure you're subscribed, consider hitting the bell, and definitely leave us a comment with your thoughts on some of this episode's big stories. This week on the podcast, we have Al the Geek joining us to discuss the World Foam Alliance's recent successful toy drive fundraiser, speculating on recent major brand leaks, and more. Be sure to catch that on all podcasting platforms or right here on YouTube. Also, don't miss our merch store or our Ko-Fi, where you can support us and receive some fun perks. Other than that, we'll see you in two weeks with another episode. Bye. All that and more in the first Foam Noobs Collect... Foam Noom 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 Noom. You may remember gel beads from our recent piece on patent disagreement. Dis- disagreement. Disagreement. We're filled with an impressive... F- I'm already messing that up. Mm, I'm tripping over my words. Cool. Pennsylvavel. Uh, Pennsylvavel? Pennsylvavel. My God. Tinker shot of Spitfire product. Uh, I want to say productions. Good Lord. I've already screwed it up. Remembering to change the props. Remembering to change the props. Remembering to change the prop. Designed from the ground up by Flux's team based on the Fortnite flare, which I could be holding in my hand like a doofus. I'm just not, even though it's, I literally just saw it. These sing- Sir? You're my lynx. You're my cat. Look at this guy. How can I say no? How can I say no to cat? He's too good. Buddy. I'm making biscuits. Free biscuits for everybody watching the video. Enjoy. Get through this episode.